Hello, my name is Anja Nizarabian. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Southern California. The study I'm presenting today is a literature review study that we did to understand demand response opportunities in water supply and wastewater systems. And I'm gonna spend the next 15 minutes sharing some of the findings. As we are integrating more renewable energy from solar and wind, which are variable and intermittent, we need more flexible resources that can come online quickly and back up these fluctuations. If we have utility scale battery, we can use this abundance of renewable energy to charge the battery and use whenever we don't have much renewable energy in the grid. Another opportunity can come from demand side itself in a way that demand uh, electricity consumers can act as a virtual battery such that we can flexibly change the consumption behavior so we can increase demand during sunny hours and we can reduce demand whenever we don't have much renewable energy available or whenever electricity prices are pretty high. So I'm gonna focus on water sector as a demand side sector and see what kind of flexibility opportunities we have available in that section. Uh, the water sector is very energy intensive. We define water sector to be as uh, water supply and wastewater management systems. And to have an idea how big this industry is in terms of energy consumption in the United States, uh, let's, have, let's have a look at electricity consumption numbers. We consume about 3% of total electricity consumption for water supply and wastewater management. In California, which is more water stressed than the rest of the United States, we consume even more energy, more electricity, to source water and to manage the wastewater. And that accounts for 7.7% of the electricity of, of total uh, in-state electricity consumption. In addition to that, we consume about 11% electricity for water-related end users. That includes electric heaters, which is not the focus of this study. We consume energy to source water from groundwater, from lakes, from other uh, surface water sources. And then we consume energy to convey water to treatment facilities. In some cases, we have enough gravity force, but in most cases, we need to use pumps to be able to convey water uh, into treatment plants. And in treatment plants, we consume energy for some processes that are making sure that the water has a uh, potable grade, and this water becomes uh, available to the end users through portable water distribution network that involves pumping stations and storage and a lot of pipelines. After water is being used in end use, uh, we collect this water in sewer system and we convey them into wastewater treatment facilities. In wastewater treatment plants, uh, we make sure that the processes in, that we use are gonna uh, degrade all the biomaterials, are the organic waste and materials that exist in sewer system so that the water has a good quality to be discharged back, and the standard quality to be discharged back into the environment. Aeration unit, which is commonly used in secondary treatment units, is very energy intensive because there are large water tanks where we need to use the pumps to um, pump the air inside these water tanks where we separate organic materials and uh, handle them in uh, biosolids management units. And these biosolid materials can further be decomposed into uh, biogas and this biogas can uh, serve as a fuel and a cogeneration unit where we can produce electricity as well as some of the heat needs of the plant. And in some cases, we may also be able to generate extra electricity and export them back into the grid. Let's take another look into this figure, this time in terms of, the, uh, in terms of identifying the flexibility resources. So uh, as I mentioned, portable water distribution system consumes a lot of energy. And in some water utilities, that can be about 85% of their uh, water supply uh, energy consumption. So if these pumping stations are energy intensive and we have a lot of them. So the, uh, they introduce variable source of flexibility because uh, that will depend on the size of the pumping station but if we can coordinate well the pumping station and the storage capacity, we should be able to provide a good amount of uh, load flexibility. And in some cases that we are using variable frequency drive pumps, which have a control system embedded in the pump, uh, it becomes even more flexible because in this case, we have a wider range of operation for the pump compared to fixed rate pumps. 
And uh, reservoirs and tanks are also introducing a lot of uh, flexibility because they can help us to store some of the water, the raw water or wastewater in these tanks so that we can manage the amount of the influent that goes into treatment facilities. In this case, uh, we can delay some of the treatment processes because we just have uh, enough storage that can uh, help us uh, buffer, uh, between, buffer between uh, collection and wastewater treatment plants. And uh, aeration unit itself can provide a large uh, potential of uh, load reduction because this is very in an energy intensive unit and we can use this process in an intermittent way. However, the flexibility that comes from this aeration unit can be limited to a few minutes, um, less than an hour in most cases, or in the order of an hour or two hours, because uh, we have seen some tests where uh, the water quality, the influent quality can uh, reduce because of the intermittent operation of uh, aeration, which is a challenge in uh, managing aeration unit itself. And uh, another opportunity can come from cogeneration units that are an on-site generation facility in wastewater treatment plant in this case. They can provide variable uh, potential depending on how big this generation uh, plant is and how big uh, the uh, potential is in terms of producing biogas fuel. And if we have biogas storage on the sites, then that will make us, uh, that will increase the flexibility that uh, this system can provide uh, for the electricity system. Therefore, the water sector is a particularly attractive option for demand side flexibility because it has large water storage capacity embedded in the system, it has large interruptible pumping loads, and energy generation opportunities also are available in the system. I'll give you some examples to have an idea how water industry is looking into these opportunities. So in this study, which was done in 2008, nine wastewater treatment facilities were studied in California. And these nine uh, facilities together could provide about four megawatts uh, load reduction, which is equivalent to their 34% of total operational load, which is pretty significant. And the breakdown of the load reduction potential shows that almost half of this reduction can come from water recycling, which involves the water pumping, the recycled water pumps that convey the recycled water into a recycled water distribution network. And about 25% of the load reduction can come from pumping and another 20% from aeration and 3% from other uh, sources. Another example is Urban Ranch Water District in California that could reduce 40% of its electricity use uh, usage in hours when electricity prices were high, and in this case, it's a summer day in 2015. So this water utility that manages both supply side and wastewater management uh, prefer to use and reduce their pumping loads from groundwater and drinking water. So in this case, they use these flexibility opportunities to reduce their pump, and they didn't use much of their uh, sewage uh, lift stations and uh, water recycling systems. So uh, these two case studies are highlighting uh, how important and how uh, effective water, uh, water flexibility opportunities can be in terms of reducing electricity. But using these flexibility opportunities as a demand response is not common practice yet. So our review study that involved over 100 uh, study papers and industry reports uh, tries to understand what the challenges are and what other things are needed to be able to uh, use this uh, flexibility option in a more uh, common way. So a specific architecture is needed to automate demand response with the electric grid conditions in a way that we want to be able to frequently respond and cope with the dynamics of the electric grid. So we have to be able to automate this system so we can use our flexibility sources in a more common and more frequent way. Uh, look, just uh, this figure shows a simplified diagram of how this architecture and what is this architecture that we are talking about. Starting from uh, very left of this figure, a demand response event 
should be administered by a demand response program administrator. That can be an electric utility or can be a third party aggregator or a third party company. So the DR program administrator has knowledge about the situation that happens in the grid and knows what the conditions are. For example, in this case, in California, independent system operator, uh, the utility side knows and has information about uh, prices, locational marginal prices. So in this case, in blue dot points that you can see, electricity prices are pretty low. In some other region, electricity prices are pretty high and shown in dark green dots. So this information can be conveyed through demand response automation server to a water facility, to a local water facility, and let them know that their flexibility resources are needed for the grid. And in response, a water facility can use this energy management system to activate some of the predefined demand response strategies and use their control system to make the uh, adjustments in the operation. And in this case, a water facility will change in its electricity consumption pattern in response to the needs of the grid. And these changes will be recorded, these electricity consumption changes will be recorded and will be the basis of the payments that a water facility will be getting from uh, a demand program administrator. So these elements are needed to be able to do an active and more grid integrative uh, demand response. But why they are not being done? We identified a few key opportunities that research can contribute to address these challenges. So technical complexities is one major component. Water uh, facilities want to make sure that flexible operation in their system is not gonna compensate water quality. So more pilot studies and experimental tests are needed to improve water use and water quality trade-off characterization. So we need to have better knowledge about what the limitations of the systems are and how long these flexibility resources can uh, work with the system without compensating the water quality. Cost effectiveness is another major component. A lot of these demand response programs are, uh, have different components of economics and the programs themselves are very different across different electric utilities. So having a better understanding about grid interactive demand response with regards to electricity markets, energy markets, and the services that a flexible resource can provide is very important to understand what the value of these flexibility resources have in the long term. So it will motivate the water utility to become uh, an active participant in this uh, program. Another opportunity comes from coordinating all demand side management strategies. Water utilities are well known about energy efficiency uh, measures. A lot of their energy management measures involve energy efficiency. So they want to reduce their energy consumption. They want to save energy. But a lot of times these strategies are evaluated in isolation from demand response or distributed energy generation. We think that there is value in having more integration of multi-objective demand side management solutions that can look into all these solutions uh, together rather than one uh, single solution in isolation. And another uh, solution, and lastly, is the incorporation of demand response concepts in water energy nexus studies. It is very hard to find in over 100 studies that we reviewed any water energy nexus study that involves flexibility. We had see a lot of studies that look into interdependency of water sector and energy sector and the management, co-management opportunities that exist among the two sectors. But hardly they touch about flexibility provisions that, such as demand response that we discussed in this study. And we think there is a large uh, need in uh, this type of studies as well. With that, I would like to acknowledge my collaborators, my PhD advisor, Dr. Kelly Sanders, my other collaborators at the University of Southern California, Sophia, Dave, and Dr. Childress. I also want to thank my funding sources, NSF and Electric Power Research Institute for providing the funding of this study. In the end, I would like to thank for your attention and time, and I will leave you with my contact information. Feel free to email me, reach out with any questions, I would be happy to discuss further with you. Thank you.